shaped rooms and floors can make choosing rugs really difficult, but Karen Seeley has a solution. People often ask me, what do you do about a front hall area rug when the front hall is slightly awkward, as this one is? When I first came by, the clients had a little tiny one over here. It wasn't very functional and didn't really look great. So we decided to have some broad loom cut to fit. Works out really well and gives you a nice big feeling of a front hall. The question is, where do you end it? Do you end it here so it lines up with this wall? Or do you take it all the way to here as we did? By making it bigger, it makes the whole room feel bigger. And it gives people an opportunity to walk in and not get stuck right at the front door. As well, we now have access to our closet. She's always thinking function, and she's here with me in studio right now, Karen Seeley. Yeah. <laughs> that you did that and you know what Broadloom um, is inexpensive so it's you can do it custom without breaking the bank and it makes more sense for that space to do it that way we get the like the logged at the front door because of that exactly the bigger, carpet's too small it has to be big enough so your guests come in and they don't feel like they're standing on an island afraid to get off that yes. island so make sure it's big it'll make your front hall feel that much bigger right and and you can see where we ended that rug was appropriate because we found a natural spot at the end of that archway yes so I'm actually gonna go through a whole bunch of fun facts and things to think about when you're picking your own area rug tell us I'm everything gonna start off with how do you surge those engines how, how do you like if you're buying a piece of broad loom you obviously can't leave it raw mm -hmm. So what do you do with it? So we're going to start off with one of the most inexpensive, and that's this side right here. So this is a machine binding, and it's about 450 a linear foot. Okay. Then you can go to this far end here, which is a machine surge. Okay. Which almost looks like yarn that wraps around the edge. And this one's about 5 to $6 a linear foot. Then you can go to this, and this is one of my favorites. So this is actually hand-binded, uh -huh. and so it's a nice clean edge. It looks like a knife-sharp knife, knife sharp, uh, edge there, and mm -hmm. what they've done is they did the tape on the backside so you don't see it. I like that. So it ends that. up being really clean. Then, Obviously the most expensive, that's more expensive. No, you know what, this is more expensive than the machine, yes. but this is about $9 a linear foot, so okay. it's gonna cost you a little bit more. Yep. But in about the same price category, you also have quarter inch cotton overlap, mm. so you get a little bit of a reveal, but it's still pretty minimal, and these come in a million colors, so you can match it to your rug or not. And then, of course, most of us have seen this. This is a tape overlay. So in this case, we can pick our material. So this can be linen, it can be cotton, it can be leather, it can be as wide or as thin as you want. You can even double it up and do a bit of a different color here. So you can make it super custom. It's lo a lovely border. And, and the price can be nine to $15, depending on the material you pick. Obviously leather being, as Shai told us, leather being the most expensive you can pick. Right. So those are your options there. Then I'm gonna walk you through the options of what materials do you wanna use? Because okay. there's so many choices. And we're gonna start off with the most inexpensive. This, this is polypropylene. It's great for outdoor. Mm -hmm. So it's pretty stain resistant, except for oil-based stains, which we should, you know, if you're in a situation where you have lots of oil around, this is not necessarily the right carpet. It can crush, so you should look for a low pile. Okay. But it's fade resistant, and it's, you know, you don't have to worry about moisture or water or anything like that. So that's Good. our first one. Then we move into nylon. Yep. So nylon also is synthetic. Nylon has come a long way. Right. But look at these, look at these are all nylon. You can barely and tell. And you can barely tell. Yeah. And they have a great hand, and that means a great feeling. A like great they feel, feel good to the touch. And lots of different orientations, so it's great. And the price point's fairly reasonable. Sometimes we get into branded, you'll know, you'll see a brand name, mm -hmm. and it's a little bit more money, and mm -hmm. often because they've, they've actually added a stain inhibitor. Oh, so that's not okay. a bad thing. So, so a stain inhibitor, anything else for maintenance that you're going to want to know if you're using a synthetic uh, fabric? Well, you know what? Nylon is one of the easiest of the synthetics to clean. Mm -hmm. So if you're concerned about, like, you have kids and that kind of thing, this is a great pets. great one. Yeah, absolutely. Okay. We're actually going to get into pets because there's more to know, too, about pets, okay. not just the material. Good. So then we get into one more synthetic. This is a viscose. Mm -hmm. And some people refer to this as a poor man's silk because you can see it's got this beautiful <laughs> luxury. Mm -hmm. it's, it's really got a great little sheen. Yes. And so so it's really nice to the touch. Then we this get into good. this is silk, and as, as Shai was good. saying earlier, silk is a very delicate fabric, so we have to be careful. Um, this one's actually wool silk blend to make it a little bit more durable. And more silk content means more money. Right. And if you look at this one, this one is actually wool, and this is viscose. You can see why they oh, add the is. viscose because it gets this like great sheen. Yes. And sometimes it's silk, and if this is silk, this rug would be twice the money. Yes. Then yeah. there's sizels, and we've all seen sizels. Really practical. 
practical in dining room areas, front mats, back I, mats. You know what? I love them for stair runners because they're stair really, really runners. durable. They'll never crush. Yes. Has a, you know, it's great for non-slip for kids. Yes. So they're just not as easy to clean. So we have to be careful of that. So get one that's darker and you're good to go. Right. Then, of course, my favorite, I love wool. Wool has natural mm. lanolin, so it's naturally stain repellent. It feels great. You can get a million colors. Like, look at all these colors and orientations. Yeah. From flat weaves to nice, thick carpets with a loop. Like, you really, the world is your oyster when it comes to wool. But, of course, it's probably twice as much as the nylons and the synthetics. You're saying easier to clean? Easier to clean, way okay. easier to clean. That's good. Then we get into the different constructions. So we can have a loop. Yeah. And this is really durable because the ends of the fiber aren't um, showing. So when you go to step on it, it's actually super, super durable. Okay. Then we get into cut pile, which is really luxurious. That feels it's good. really cozy. Yeah. Now this is if you have pets, because if they claw, they're not pulling any of the loops out. Ah. So this is one of the reasons this is good for pets. That makes sense. And then you get the combo where you have a bit cut and a bit loop. And this yeah. is also good for pets. And you know why? This is my little trick. Why? If a pet goes and a fiber sticks out, you get some scissors out and trim it, and oh, you never done. see it. It's okay. awesome. So you get, and you get these great little patterns. Very good to know. So that the thing great. to think about, too, is if you're doing stair runners, make sure you don't do something that's too thick. So if you do these really thick rugs on a stair runner, see when I bend it, you get these, like, lines? Yeah. In the industry, we call that smiling. So you don't really? want to see, yeah, you don't want to see the smile on the edge of the stair. Right. And if it's too thick, too, with all that traffic going up and down the stairs, you're going to get crushing. Mm -hmm. So it's important to think about where you're going to use the carpet and then pick the right material as well. Speaking of where you're going to use it, here's a picture of what not to do. <laughs> um, and it's just about making sure that you don't have trip hazards exactly. happening. Exactly. So make sure, like in this case, this is Fiona, one of our producers here at City Line. She did this. <laughs> Sorry, Fee. Thanks, Fee. Um, so so what she'd said was she wished that she hadn't put that corner right at the doorway because yeah. as she walks and she trips on that corner. Yes. So um, it's important to think about the orientation and ending the carpet so it's appropriate, making sure it's not too thick, making sure that you, you know, urban carpet tape to make sure those corners are down. Yes. And if it's really thick too, think about like a front entrance way. Yeah. Like if you're opening that front door and your rug's really thick, you may you can't open front the front door. door. Roll up the carpet, open the door. Oh. Hey, guys, come on in. Annoying. <laughs> and it's all the stuff that you might not be thinking about. Yeah. So that's what you need to test. Uh, absolutely. Really good. Yeah. Amazing information. I love that.